I am Anthony from HasslersNet, and you're watching 10 Questions. Today, I am here with Mike of Firetox Designs. I will ask 10 questions about his experience as a Transformers 3D parts designer, as well as what led him onto that path. Hi, Mike. Hey. Uh, so I have 10 questions to ask you that I more or less ask everybody else, uh, but I'm specifically adjusting these questions for you. Uh, some heavy retooling, as you would say, in your, your industry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some remix. <laughs> Uh, if at any time your responses leave an opening, I may ask a follow-up question. Are you ready to begin? Absolutely. Okay, so what entertained you while you were growing up? Uh, well, I mean, of course, it was cartoons every morning, either at home or at a babysitter's house. Uh, but my, my childhood is a little crazy, so sometimes it might have been some cartoons on cable, and sometimes we might not have had a TV, so it might have been just out with some farm animals or on a dirt bike or in the woods. Just kind of depended on what point in my childhood we're looking at. Did you? Well, you mentioned cartoons. What did you specifically watch? Um, what younger, younger? So we're talking, you know, early '80s was Transformers, He-Man, your your standard fare, uh, you know, GI Joe. Um, when Ninja Turtles came out, it was a full focus straight onto Ninja Turtles. I I had hundreds and hundreds of Ninja Turtles. Okay. So, what made you decide to start printing and designing 3D Transformer parts? Well, at first it was just going to be printing, and I, I had a 3D printer, and I was printing little things for the house here and there, or designing little dumb things for the house. And then I was trying to find parts that I thought, oh, I can, why do I need to wait and buy something like that? That should be something you can just print, like cassettes for Soundwave or something like that. And I couldn't find anything. And when I would find things that were really cool, they were always... Forty dollars on Shapeways, and I thought yeah, that's. I, I don't need your. I don't need you to print it. I just need the file. How do I get the file? So I, I found Thingiverse and was searching on Thingiverse for things, but it was still pretty limited. And uh, I got to the point where I bought. Or I didn't even buy it. I got it for free. A, a G1 hardhead, but he didn't have his chest plate and he didn't have his shoulder cannon. So I figured I'll give it a shot and very rudimentary design rudimentary yeah that word designed a chest piece and a shoulder cannon for him um and that was probably the first thing i designed for transformers from scratch there was a um a weird wolf sword that was a g1 sword that somebody had up on thingiverse that um i very politely asked them if i could make a version of that for the uh, titans return version and so i had to kind of stretch it and change it and change the pegs and stuff. And so that's what my wearable holds is a 3D printed version of the G1 sword. So when was that first time you began to design and or print being the, because you said you did printing first, then you did designing. What, what was the, when was the dates for those? Like what generally? So I had the printer for a few years before I designed really anything. Little doorknobs and stuff, I don't count that. But the first files that I put up for Transformers parts was in uh, November of 2019. And then from there, it just spun completely out of control. Because you're like, you take requests at, at some point, right? I try not to, honestly. Um, there's a reason for that being is then it starts to feel like work. Um, I, I don't want this to be a job. Uh, I only offer to print the parts just for people who don't have a printer. If you know somebody who's got a printer, by all means, have them print them. Um, I don't, it's not that I hate money. I just don't want this to feel like a job. So I try not to take commissions unless it's something I can just spit out really fast. Um, I've made the mistake of taking a couple of commissions that were pretty long. And, um, it's one of those things where it's when I'm stuck in the hole of this is exactly what I have to design, not just whatever pops out of my head, then I get a little burned out. Like, um, as a, a perfect example of this is. In the month of December of 2019, because I, I was just looking at it, um, I pumped out 17 designs. Some of them were daily. And I don't sketch anything before I design. So it was, I sat down that night, came up with it, printed it, posted it online. It's all same day. And there was 17 designs for the month of December. And that continued for a while until I got a uh, kind of a commission job for an upcoming game that I'm not even sure when it's coming out now. And they asked me to design the weapons to their game. Um, it's a tabletop game. And they wanted to be able to 3D print the weapons from the tabletop game for the Transformers to use. And I thought, okay, that's awesome. I can give, give me the, the book that you have for the game and I'll use those 
you know, just the verbiage and the descriptions and come up with stuff. I got so burned out. I, th I think I put in 19 designs. They asked for 12. They ended up with 19. Um, and I had to take a break. So there's, there's entire months back when that happened. Like August, I think I posted one thing and that was it. Be and it was because I was just so burned out from just the monotony of this is what I have to design. I have to get this done tonight. Then I have to show it to somebody so they can approve it. And I, it was not enjoyable. Okay, so this is entirely a hobby for you then. Oh, 100%. And really, I, I, I make things I like, and that's the way I like it. I like to make things that I like or that I would like to see, and then I put them out there and hope other people enjoy it. Um, very, It's gotten a little bit more now, but sometimes I will listen to you know what people are looking for You know when people want things. I knew everybody was going to hate Wheelie. That's why I made him new legs. Which has been the biggest hit, I think. And I thought I was, you know, I thought everyone really loved the Nemesis set and the uh, Optimus Prime upgrade set, but the wheelie legs, I can't print them fast enough, which I, is awesome. I, well, it's because I was going to ask, like, um, are, do because you, you're printing them, and I assume you're distributing them. Are you getting and reimbursed at any of this? So I, I try to keep the things as super fair as I possibly can. Um, I'm not Shapeways. I don't need sixty bucks for a part this big. Understandably, Shapeways parts that are this big are printed at such a small uh, layer height, is what it's referred to, that the details are, are immaculate. I, I can't print like that on the printers that I have, but I will do the best that I can for people. Um, and then I have to kind of cover my shipping costs and my time. And other than that, um, I think my prices are pretty fair considering, you know, like the, um, the Optimus Prime set that non-F sells I think that's more than what mine sells for, and that one's um, that one's all injection molded. Mine's printed and hand cleaned and hand fitted and hand assembled before it ever goes out to somebody. Okay. And I print per order. I don't like to keep inventory, and again, feels except for the wheelie lips that I have twenty of sitting right here. Um, I don't usually print things and then stock them. If somebody happens to want something, then I'll print it. But then that means for big stuff like the Nemesis set or the Optimus set, it might take me a week to get all those parts printed and, and finished and, and assembled before I put ship it to somebody. Everyone's been really understanding that, and they understand that it's all, you know, this is essentially you're buying handcrafted items. You're not buying factory floor items. Okay, so you did mention that you initially did things like doorknobs and stuff. What was your first part that you printed, and then what was your first part that you designed? Uh, well, everybody, when they first get a 3D printer, they print lots of little tiny things, little benchy boats and little calibration cubes and all kinds of stuff like that. So I don't know what the very first thing I printed was. It was probably something off of the original printer's SD card because they all come with something to print. Well, let's they, stick with Transformers then. Uh, Transformers, then, the first thing I printed for Transformers was, I think it actually was the hardhead, the, yeah, the hardhead stuff that I designed. So it was at the same time. But it was the hard head, the hat and the, I mean, not the hat, the, the cannon and the chest piece were, are super, super basic. It's literally a square with an octagon on it, and then there's a pin that goes through it. So it, we're not talking anything like anything I've made in the last few months. Um, and the same with the cannon is it's basically just a square with a cone coming out or a tube coming off of it that just plugs on. So, if I mean, if I was ever going to redesign them, they would look worlds better than they look now. But it's also kind of like, eh, it's G1 Hardhead. I don't even have a head for him. I found one on Thingiverse and printed him. It's not even his head, but you can print Headmasters. Because uh, I was going to ask, could not a modern Headmaster work on an old Headmaster? But I feel like maybe not. I could make it work if I made an adapter. Right. I thought about it, but they're so small compared to the other ones. Oh, that is true. There is size difference. Yeah, they're like half the size of the original ones. If you stand them, if you stand like the printed one I have, I was looking at it next to Weird Wolf's head one day when I first printed it. It was like they are that big, the head size. <laughs> they're the size of our dude Lungeon or Legend Core Class. Yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah, I bet you if I stood one next to that Bumblebee from that that came with um, the the really really bad little Daniel figure, that's actually about the size of a Headmaster, actually. Oh well. Okay, so now I, I realize you've only been doing this for about two, three years. 
Yeah. Uh, but offhand, what trends have you seen change with Transformers 3D designing and printing since you started your product line? Obviously, technology changes. Have you yeah. upgraded your, your system? You said you improved your designs. So what transitions have you made since you started? Uh, well, the, the first printer I had was a, a little garbage printer that um, I bought. I used an excuse to buy off of Dell, but it was very proprietary. It had to have proprietary filaments and chips that you put into it. And I had to do a bunch of hacking to get it to do what I wanted it to do. And it was it's pretty much garbage. It's in the corner over there. Um, and then I bought another, again, I keep doing this. I buy cheapo printers that end up being, there's a reason they're super cheap. So um, my Tronxy printer, my original one, has printed almost everything you've ever seen that I've done. And it's just been me dialing it in. I've almost done nothing to it. It's just dialing it in. Um, and then over Black Friday, I got, I got lucky with, there was a strange verbiage written in a couple of the printers one Black Friday, and it said, uh, half price when you buy one or more, which is odd. Okay. So I was at my computer, and my computer has honey on it. And I opened the link, and it said, sure enough, it, it goes in. It was a like a $270 printer. It goes in, half off. Then Honey applies a coupon that I didn't know existed, but it's Honey. That printer was $70. That's 75% off. Wow. So I did it again on a different printer to see if it would work, and it made that printer like 80 bucks. So I have two different versions of the upgraded version of my original printer. So I have a, um, a, a Tronxy XY2 Pro and a Tronxy XY2 Pro Titan, uh, just differences in the little bit a little bit differences in the hardware and those are what run almost everything now because they are whisper quiet whereas if i had the old one running right now i couldn't hear you over it offhand how let, let's say you're making a gun for a deluxe figure like how long does that take to print hour maybe two that's not too bad what, what about uh like if you had to reprint megatron's canon megatron's canon the the one that i do have that I can't show anybody yet. Is uh, it takes like two and a half hours to print. Okay, but that's a lot to do with my settings. You could print these faster if you, you know, you jack up the speeds and you change some of the settings, change the layer heights to make them higher. It would be rougher, but it would print faster. Okay. But then you get like, like I've got, uh, I'm printing a bunch of rollers to give out at TFCon, and I'm printing them in green, and I'll never do it again. And these take about five hours to print. A piece. A piece. Just these. Take about five hours to print. They, because of my settings, they take about five hours to print. And then if there's something wrong with them, I'll throw it away and make another one, um, which happens more often than I'd like to admit. Uh, and then I have to print the wheels separate. And then there's a lot of cleanup and then assembly. So what is the success rate on printing then? Now I'm probably at 99%. But oh. occasionally something will happen. So you're saying you made 100 rollers, one of them was trash. Yeah, yeah. I'd say probably the last hundred of them I've made, because I've definitely made a hundred of them by now. So, what do you think brings people to buy your pro products or print your products? Uh, basically, check out your work. I think um, a, a lot of the help getting the word out that Patriot Prime has done, and then Cato and Bert have done, uh, has helped a lot. Um, when I first, you know, would hit people up to see if they wanted to, you know, you want a box of stuff you can do a review on. Um, I never did it to get people to buy from me. I just wanted people to go download this free stuff. And if you're interested in 3D printing, get more people into 3D printing because I think I think 3D printing is awesome, and I love what you can do with it. And I do way more other things with it than just transformer parts. Um, there's occasionally I'll print stuff that useful tools for work or, I mean, now it's a topic people don't like to talk about, but I mean, you can print firearm parts with it if you really want to, because it's getting more and more advanced and the, the, the filament and the technology going into that's getting better and better all the time. And I mean, I would love to see a future where everyone's just got a printer in their house. It's not going to be, you know, the super Star Trek replicators, but we're getting there. I mean, they do have food printers. They do have food printers, and I almost bought one, and then I was like, no, I don't need that much chocolate in my life. <laughs> Fat enough. That would be bad. But I, the thought of printing roller and chocolate crossed my mind more than once. <laughs> so.
So uh, what changes do you have planned for your product line in the near future? I mean, because you say you do have things coming out. But, and, yeah. of course, you're improving over time. Your quality is getting better. Uh, so what do you think you're going to do in the future if you're, if you're willing to you know, put that out there? Yeah. Uh, like, um, well, we all saw the leaked photos of Studio Series uh, Slug, not Slag. Uh, and he comes with a little Daniel that has the same stupid legs Wheelie had. So uh, this is first iteration of a sword for him because, again, it looked like in the product shots he doesn't come with one. And I made one for Grimlock, so I might as well make him one too. And then I've been testing these, and I think they're complete. They're on roll wheelie because same size ball joints. He's basically the same sculpt. He's just going to be retweaked for uh, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. So I I totally redesigned the legs. They're not they're not just wheelie's legs with a slightly different design. They are completely different. I took pictures from the movie and pictures of the figure that's supposed to come out, and kind of mashed those together to make these. And these will be out shortly. Um, they should be easier for people to print than the last version was. Easier to assemble, for sure. The amount of times I've gotten myself with um, needle-nose pliers trying to put those ball joints into Wheelie's legs that I made, because they're so small, but it's a double ball. So it's basically just a post with two balls on the end of it. Shoving that into Wheelie's legs takes a pair of pliers. Ooh. These don't, because these aren't double balled. They're just a simple thigh piece has a single ball joint that's printed part of it and then the bottom goes on they're not quite as posable but i don't think people really care so much because the point is now he can stand not and he can do some poses but so that's going to be coming out soon um i'm still waiting to hear back when the um command droids game is supposed to come out because i designed all the weapons for that game uh, which is a kind of pen and paper 80s centric transforming robots game that was on Kickstarter. Uh, but with COVID, everything's gotten pushed back so far that I don't actually know when the game's coming out or if I hope it does still. Um, Cause I've got a bunch of, I've got a bunch of designs tied up in there that um, are unfortunately becoming outdated based on, if you look at some of that stuff, that's a year ago. And now you've got things like the modular weapon set, which is some of the best detailed parts I've ever made. Or RC's guns, which I love RC's guns, hand down. I think they're probably the best weapons I've ever made. So what changes would you like to make if you had unlimited resources? Um, if I had unlimited resources, I'd love to get a couple of resin printers because I've had people reach out. Um, and this always happens specifically actually with Roller. Uh, they'll try to print it in resin, and it's it's not easy to put that thing in, re in resin. It's super easy. It's designed to be printed on cheap machines but it's designed to be printed in FDM machines. It's not designed to be printed in resin. So when you print something like this in resin, I've had people tell me that it destroyed their bed when they try to remove it because it's such a flat surface when it prints. Um, I've had other people tell me that uh, trying to clean it up and put the wheels on that the pins snap because resin's so brittle. So I'd love to get a couple of resin printers to be able to also test my stuff in resin so that I could have kind of more of a guidebook for like, if you're printing it with this, do this. If you're printing it in resin, do this orientation and print it like this. Well, that brings me to ask then, what's the difference between the normal printing and resin as far as quality and like the texture of the materials? So uh, if you print it with a normal FDM printer, which is any of the ones that use a filament, which is, you know, the big spools of plastic, those, you can get some pretty good layers to them, but the layer lines on those are going to be a lot thicker than what you would get from a resin printer. Resin printers can print to like a couple of microns, is my understanding, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, whereas the best prints that I can get are at a layer height of 0 0.16 millimeters. Seems to be the most cons consistently good prints that I can get with these machines. Which to me feels awesome. You don't really feel the layer lines when you run your hands across it. You don't really see it that much. Um, if you run your fingernail across it, you can sort of hear the layer lines. But with resin, there's also a different way of orient orientating the parts because you also need them to drain because it's a liquid that you're curing, basically. Whereas with these, you have to worry about what's going to fall because they're printed standing up, whereas resin prints like this and pulls itself out of a vat. A reverse Terminator. Uh... Right. It, it really is. Actually, that's a pretty good analogy for it. 
But it, the problem with designing things that way is then you have to remember, if I'm designing this sword, I know how gravity works the way this prints. The way I have this set up would not work or may not work for a resin printer because now you're flipping it. And it's going to print the same from this point to this point, but now it's doing it against gravity. Huh. So I take it the resin printers then are also a bit more expensive. They're getting really, they're actually really getting really good printing or really good pricing because, um, and I almost did buy a couple of them that were on a sale and it for a resin printer and a cure and wash station because that's the other thing about resin. Resin, um, I've seen pictures of people who get resin burns when they get resin on their skin and I've got little kids which is one of the reasons, the other reasons I've never bought one. Um, I've also seen what happens when you get that stuff everywhere. It also cures under like UV light. So you got to have uh, the enclosure generally for the cure and wash station, for example, and for the actual printer will be in a not clear tr plastic. It's more of like an orange or yellow plastic or, you know what I mean? Clear plastic. The prevent UV from getting in. Right. Cause it's the same thing as using a laser. If you're using a laser cutter, you got to have that UV. You got to have that protection because you'll burn your eyes, or worse. You know, make, you know. And this does kind of the same thing to a lesser degree. Um, you can get like a cure and wash station and a printer for like six, seven hundred bucks. I've seen them, but I can buy that printer for eighty bucks and that one for ninety, and that one was two hundred new. So, just depends on if I ever get a space that I feel is going to be a safe enough spot where I can lock things away and not have to worry about the kids or the dog or anything else getting in there and knocking resin over or, you know, and then there's the cleanup you have to, you have to clean everything with alcohol, um, which is not easy to come by right now. Now I'm thinking to myself, wow, oh, I was at the store. They had plenty of alcohol, but I feel like you mean something else. Uh, no, well, I mean is, um, you're not, you could just go buy the little bottles of rubbing alcohol. Uh, but we're talking five gallon jugs of rubbing alcohol oh. fill up a vat to then clean everything with uh i mean you could reuse it but for a time there every time i went to the store to try to buy rubbing alcohol just for our first aid at home i the only thing i could find was witch hazel why that's being sold at cvs i don't know but there's witches who might need it who knows yes ancient cures so, uh, do you wish to mention anything else about your products, your design work, anything that comes to mind? Uh, so, all of the files will always be free. That's something I've always wanted to stick to as much as um, it's not the most popular decision I've made in the house. Um, I, I always want these files to be free for anybody to print with the, ex with the expectation of I'm, I'm providing these files for free. If you're going to print them, print them. If you're going to post pictures, awesome. I love seeing pictures. Uh, don't turn around and claim it's yours. I found several people who've done that so far and it's, it's not fun and it's kind of discouraging for somebody like me who just kind of wants to put stuff out there and then see somebody else selling or trying to claim their work. Uh, it's, it's pretty discouraging. It kind of makes you want to just pull everything back and I, I really don't ever want to do that. So everything is always going to be free. Um, if you know somebody with a printer and you want them to print your parts, go for it. If you get, if you want to print some parts for your friends, go for it. I don't care. Uh, don't try to make a business out of it. That's kind of the trade-off. The only money I make off of this is um, I have a very small Patreon that I, I will post files early. So um, sometimes there's test files that don't get released. Sometimes there are uh, files that will come out a week, maybe even a month earlier than everybody else gets them. It's kind of with a free service that I offer. It's kind of the only thing I can do for a Patreon. Um, and then if you, if you want me to print the parts, you know you'll get the best quality because I... I have way better quality control than Hasbro does. Especially in 2020. <laughs> okay. Uh, so do you have content on other outlets and how can people find more about your products online? I have Facebook, Instagram, web, uh, website, which is uh, Thingiverse and YouTube. So Facebook is facebook.com uh, slash 3DP, which I, I assume is 3D printing, and uh, 3DP transformers. And then Instagram is Instagram.com slash Firetox Designs. Uh, the Thingiverse website is Thingiverse.com slash Firetox slash Designs. And then your YouTube is actually uh, M-T-H-A-Y-E-S 2010. And for the people who are watching, subscribe to his channel so he can actually rename it Firetox <laughs> Designs. 
Uh, yeah, so he needs a hundred people. Fun. So people subscribe to his YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of other places you can find my stuff. Um, Colts 3D, I have it set up so that anytime I put things on Thingiverse, it automatically also uploads to Colts 3D. I have a few things on my mini factory, but their process is really annoying. Um, everything you put up on there has to go through some software checking to make sure it's printable. And for some odd reason, a bunch of my things like to flag that they're not printable because I think my tolerances are lower than theirs. So it'll say, you can't print that. The, the normal print tolerances won't print that. And I'm like, here's a picture of it. It printed. Yeah, this is where I'd go. Uh, they're basically saying that you're better than them and they don't want your stuff. That's the way I felt. Uh, yeah. when, I first, when I first went on my mini factory, within two weeks, they took Nemesis Roller and front paged it. This was one of the first things I moved over to my mini factory. And I was like, yay, this is awesome. And I asked them if they had a way to just auto migrate everything from Thingiverse, because right now I'm at almost 90 items, like just 89 different items on Thingiverse, uh, including a couple of things that have nothing to do with Transformers, like a uh, Sam's Lollipop from Trick or Treat was for my daughter's Halloween costume, and I shared that, and then a, a nightlight, just because. Um, but they don't let you auto do anything, so I have to manually re-upload everything and then wait for them to deny it, and then me argue with them, like with RC's rifle so i haven't moved anything back to them yet thanks for talking to me today uh for those who are watching again facebook instagram uh check out thingiverse youtube uh also he's doing patreon uh everything is linked from your youtube as well right yes i think so yeah okay. all the links so uh if you can't find it one way go to the youtube uh also uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to his content. Uh, it's very limited, by the way, because you, you don't yeah. really focus on YouTube per se. Well, and I just started doing little things. Um, like, I did a, ver a, a very funny version of a review for the RUD figures the other day. Um, I did an, a, a review on Wheelie, not because I made him legs, but just because I, I happen to have a 2008 version of Wheelie that's actually even more awful than that one, and people should be thankful we got that one. Um, and I, I'm going to start putting out more stuff as I have time. As you can imagine, if I spend six hours designing a new weapon set and then I have to spend four hours waiting for it to print, maybe I've got some time to maybe throw a review in there, but it's very raw. It's one take. Here it is. It is what it is. I hope somebody laughs. That's about it. Uh, also, a number of Transformer reviewers have also reviewed your products. Yes. So... Um... Hopefully I mean, on your channel you'll have a playlist with those. Uh... I should do that, actually. Right. I should do that. I should fix that. I'm new to that part, um, new to that side of things. And and I, that's why it's going to continue. Even if even if I have a whole bunch of just subscribers and I'm putting out regular content, I'm not reviewing my own stuff. Well, um, you know, that's why you, you, you give samples out to other reviewers. Right. Uh, they review it for you. You add that video to your playlist so people check out your page and go, oh, hey, looky, somebody reviewed your stuff. Yeah, see, I need more help. <laughs> I need more help with this YouTube thing. All righty. Uh, if, if those of you who are watching have any comments or questions, please post them. And thank you all for watching. Thanks, Mike, for doing this. And uh, see you, everybody. Later. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledge.net and our website at hasledge.net.